so design procedure as we have seen now we'll see each and every step in much more detail what are the formula that we have to use in the calculation so let's say in step 1 we want to calculate the required moment of inertia so there are two formulas one is for the stiffener ring only and another is for the stiffener ring and shell section both together so let's say this is a formula which is to be used when we are just calculating the moment of inertia requirement of just the ring so this formula is do square ls in bracket t plus a upon ls bracket close multiplied by factor a and the whole numerator whatever we have said that divided by 14 is the factor so by this number 14 we have to divide it and we will get the required moment of inertia of the stiffener ring and if we want to take the advantage of the shell also then we have to calculate the required moment of inertia of the stiffener ring and shell section and the formula is like this d square ls t plus a s upon ls the bracket close multiplied by factor a divided by a number 10.9 so if we are designing for the cross section both together in that case is dash is the formula that what we need to calculate in step 2 we are going to calculate the available moment of inertia for the stiffener or for the shell and the stiffener cross section together and that calculated how to calculate that moment of inertia that will be calculated by our basics of engineering strength of material uh, the formula what we were used to calculate the composite section moment of inertia the same formula we have to apply over here and we need to calculate the available moment of inertia of either the stiffener or the stiffener and the shell cross section both together so is there any formula given no there is no because the available moment of inertia changes with reference to the change of the shape so since the shape is not uh, constant even the size is not constant they haven't given any particular formula because we can use as a stiffener ring any section when we are saying section we can use a ring idod ring we can use an angle section let's say 50 50 by 5 50 50 by 6 then 75 75 by 8 so you can use any isa that is indian standard angle or any um, if you are using uh, british code then as per that british standard you can choose any of the section like angles then c channel uh, then we can say i beam so whatever sections are available all sections we can use as a stiffener ring and their required or their um, the moment of inertia will change as per the change of their cross section so as we can see the square tube is having a different moment of inertia the circular pipe is having different moment of inertia so it is up to you that how to use that stiffener ring so i is the available moment of inertia in only the stiffener and i dash is the available moment of inertia of the stiffener and the shell cross section both together now when we are saying that shell is going to contribute in the moment of inertia in that region where the stiffener ring is been attached so what is the length of the shell that we need to consider which is going to credit or which is going to support this moment of inertia let's say the shell length is 8 meter so whether total 8 meter length will be going to contribute in that moment of inertia the answer is no so for that reason code has given us the limit to that length and that limit is 1.1 square root of do into ts whereas do is nothing but the od of the shell and ts is nothing but the thickness of that shell so 1.1 square root of do by uh, do into ts this is the length which is going to contribute in the moment of inertia calculation for the stiffener and the shell junction together and only this much portion we have to assume and how to apply uh, this length this length should be equally distributed on either side of your stiffener ring let's say it is 100 mm and stiffener ring center is there so from one side it has to be 50 mm above and one side it has to be 50 mm down so it has to be equally distributed so half on the upper side and half will be on the lower side and that shall be taken as lying on one half on each side of the centroid of that ring that is what is been also mentioned so whenever we are taking the credit the length limit has been given also the distribution of that length across the stiffener cross section is also been clearly defined so this is how we have to calculate the i dash which is available moment of inertia and the length credit how to take that has been mentioned in the code now in this step number 3 what we are going to do we are going to compare the required moment of inertia and the available moment of inertia per se let's say for an example the required moment of inertia was uh, 100 cm please remember that if the second uh, a moment of inertia has the 
uh, has the units of mm raised to 4 cm raised to 4 inch raised to 4 feet raised to 4 it always raised to 4 so let's say for this example we assume that 100 cm raised to 4 was our required moment of inertia and we have chosen some uh, stiffener ring let's say some size let's say 20 by 10 or let's say uh, 10 by 50 is the size of the stiffener ring what we have assumed and we come to know that the available moment of inertia of that shell and this stiffener ring section together is only 80 cm raised to so whether it is uh, satisfying the requirement no 100 was the requirement only 80 is present so what we need to do now we have to again change the size of the stiffener so once we change the size of the stiffener that 100 will also going to change the required moment of inertia also is depends upon the as that is nothing but the cross sectional area of your stiffener ring so as your stiffener ring cross section is going to get changed the required moment of inertia also slightly get modified and the available moment of inertia also we need to recalculate and again we need to compare the required with the available if the available is surplus or more than the requirement then we can say our selection of that stiffener ring is correct let's say the requirement was only 100 centimeter raised to 4 and what we have calculated is 1000 centimeter raised to 4 it is more than the requirement yes the section is correct we can go ahead with that but whether it is an optimized design no if we found that it is on very higher side then we have to take the smaller sections or we need to reduce the size of the stiffener and again back calculate usually how to proceed we always start with the smallest size available and then we'll uh, incrementally increase that depends upon the difference what we are getting let's say in first go we have found that 100 centimeter raised to 4 is the requirement we have assumed some size and it will give us only the 25 centimeter raised to 4 so whether the next size will suddenly give us 100 centimeter raised to 4 no so we will take the uh, two or three size higher so that uh, in minimum iterations we can get the answers once you are doing or practicing uh, these examples or uh, actually doing the design at that point of time you will get that feel of design that how to select the next section so our requirement is our available moment of inertia must be more than the required moment of inertia <clears throat> now let us understand what are the various uh, what are the formulas there so we always take advantage of the shell and hence we'll use the formula which is is dash is equal to do square ls in bracket t plus s upon ls bracket close multiplied by the factor a divided by uh, divided by this total to 10.9 so what are the various variables let's see one by one so is dash is dash is nothing but the required moment of inertia of the shell and the stiffener ring cross section both together so the combined required moment of inertia is is dash that is what we are going to calculate then do what is this do do is nothing but the outside diameter of the cylindrical shell on which this stiffener ring is going to be placed upon so do is nothing but od of your shell then ls what is this ls ls is defined as one half of the distance from the center line of your stiffener ring to the next line of support available on one side plus half the distance from the centroid or the center line of your stiffener ring to the next available line of support on the other side so in nutshell we can say from the center of your stiffener ring or centroid or the cg point of your stiffener ring for, uh, to the next available support on either side and we should have to take only the half of that why so because the one line of support will take half load another line of support will take half load so if the stiffener ring is only one let's say in entire vessel there is only one stiffener ring so that will support the upper portion halfway and the lower portion halfway so that supportive total length which is uh, which is been supported by that stiffener ring is considered in this calculation so as we can see uh, the number of stiffness we are going to get increased so this ls is going to also get changed so if we are using two number of stiffness then ls will be reduced further if we are using three then ls will further comes on the downward side so hence the required moment of inertia for that particular stiffness ring also going to get changed so uh, let's say diagrammatically how to calculate this ls let's say this is a stiffener ring what we have employed these two uh, dark lines suggest that these are the line of supports available so this was the earlier length what we have considered for the design 
of the uh, vessel under external pressure or the cylinder under external pressure without any credit of the stiffener when we are going to add the stiffener then it is let's say for this case we have exactly uh, mounted the stiffener at the center so this l has split in the two lengths more l1 and l2 the definition of ls is it should be l1 by 2 plus l2 by 2 so whatever the length between the uh, cg of your stiffenering or we can say from the center of the stiffenering to the next line of support from that length we have to consider only the half so l1 by 2 and l2 by 2 if we uh, if uh, we would have mounted this stiffenering not exactly at the center if there are, there are some nozzles or there are some openings so there we cannot have the stiffenering so we might have to shift that either upper side or downward side so this l1 and l2 will not be equal in that case this becomes l1 by 2 plus l2 by 2 that's why we have written in the, in this way if it is exactly at the center then it is nothing but half the length it should be l1 or l2 both are same so ls will be l1 plus l2 by 2 then t t is nothing but the minimum required thickness of for that cylindrical shell for external pressure so as it is an iterative method we have to assume the thickness and our first assumption as always we know that when we are designing the uh, pre, uh, vessel for the external pressure we will first start with the thickness if there is an internal pressure so that selected final nominal thickness we will start, uh, start to check with the external pressure so let's say 10 mm is the nominal thickness what we have selected for the internal pressure so 10 mm minus corrosion allowance is the thickness what we need to consider in external pressure calculation the same thickness is nothing but the thickness t that is what we have to consider in our calculation then as this is very very important this as is nothing but the cross sectional area of the stiffener ring so whatever stiffening ring we are using its cross sectional area so let's say we are using a ring let's say the ring that is a flat which has been bailed bent or rolled and that ring we are using as a stiffener ring and if we take the cross section of that it will look like a rectangle so that cross section let's say we are using 10 by 50 that is 10 mm thickness 50 as a width of that flat so 10 by 50 is the cross sectional area that's what we have to enter over here if we are using any c channel then cross sectional area of that c channel that we have to use over here so as is nothing but cross sectional area of the steepening ring that is what we are going to use then the term a a term is nothing but the factor a so whether this factor a we have to calculate by l by d o d o by t then we have to calculate this factor a and then factor b or a, is that a procedure similar no here this factor a we have to back calculate from the factor b so here the procedure is reversed so here we are not calculating factor a first here we are calculating factor b first so how to calculate this factor b first so in code the factor b we can calculate by directly a formula that formula is 3 by 4 pd rdo upon t plus as upon ls so by this formula we will be going to calculate the factor b first and based upon this factor b either from that cs2 chart for 5670 or any other material chart or the tabular value we will back calculate the value of factor a so now in earlier cases in case of cylindrical shells or any spherical shells we first were calculating factor A and then calculating factor B. But in case of your stiffener ring design, you first calculate the factor B is nothing but your compressive strength of that stiffening ring. And that will be calculated as 3 by 4 in bracket PD0 upon T plus S upon L. So by this first factor B will be known to us and from that we will calculate factor A. So factor A will be back calculated in this. Case. This is what is more important to be remembered. So this is in nutshell what are the various variables in the designing of this steepening ring. To become a pro in static equipment design, join our in-depth and professional training. To avail the biggest discounts on courses, click on the link in the description. Explore the various courses and discounts available. Happy learning!